Hello students and welcome to another class of English class 9th. Today we will talk and discuss and also explain the chapter The Adventures of Toto from the book The Moments. Now let me tell you a small summary of this chapter. Toto was a mischievous monkey. He was always up to something or the other. And the entire family, that is the grandfather's family, was very upset by his mischiefs. So have you ever heard or have you ever had a baby monkey as a pet? Toto is a baby monkey. So let's find out whether he is mischievous or decide. Grandfather bought Toto from a Tonga driver for the sum of 5 rupees. The Tonga driver used to keep the little red monkey tied to a feeding trough and the monkey looked so out of place there that grandfather decided he would add the little fellow to his private zoo. First, the meaning of trough is a large container for feeding animals. So, grandfather bought Toto from a Tonga driver, that is Tangewala, which you, which you call in Hindi. And he gave the Tangewala, the Tonga driver, only 5 rupees. So the cost of Toto was 5 rupees. Every day, grandfather used to see Toto tied up to a feeding trough. So one day he thought that he would buy it and add this monkey to his private zoo. Grandfather had a private zoo at home. Toto was a pretty monkey. His bright eyes sparkled with mischief beneath deep set eyebrows and his teeth, which were a pearly white, were very often displayed in a smile that frightened the life out of elderly Anglo-Indian ladies. Anglo-Indian means a person who is both a British and an Indian. But his hands looked dried up as though they had been pickled in the sun for many years. Yet his fingers were quick and wicked. Wicked means very mischievous. And his tail, while adding to his good looks, grandfather believed a tail would add to anyone's good looks, also served as a third hand. He could use it to hang it from a branch and it was capable of scooping up any delicacy that might be out of reach of his hands. Scooping means lifting up. Okay, so first the description of Toto. According to grandfather, Toto was pretty good looking. He was pretty. He has bright sparkling eyes, deep set eyebrows and his teeth were pearly white. It was as white as pearls. But whenever he smiled, he used to frighten the elderly Anglo-Indian ladies. His hands were dried up and it looks as if he is being pickled. He has been roasted in the sun for many years. But in spite of that, in spite of this color of his hands, he was quite quick and mischievous, wicked. Now the role of his tail is very important in this chapter. The grandfather uh, says that the tail is adding to the good looks of the monkey and it served as a third hand. Third hand, why? Because he, can, he could easily jump or hang from one branch to the other with the help of this third hand, that is with the help of this, of his tail. And another role the tail played and what is that? He could scoop up anything, whatever he saw, within his reach. Scoop up means he can lift up, he can carry away anything which was within his reach. Next paragraph. Grandmother always first when grandfather brought some new bird or animal. First means gets used to get irritated, confused, annoyed, afraid. So it was decided that 
Toto's presence should be kept a secret from her until she was in a particularly good mood. The grandfather and I put him away in a little closet opening into my bedroom wall, where he was tied securely, or so we thought, to a peg fastened into the wall. Peg means a hook. Okay, so grandmother disliked grand. Uh, always dislike whenever grandfather brought some new animal or bird and added to his private zoo so they thought they means the grandfather and the narrator thought that the toto's presence should be kept a secret from her unless and until she is in a good mood they didn't want grandmother to get upset annoyed or angry so now the question arises where would they keep toto for the time being till the time grandfather's mood changes so they decided to put him into a little closet which was in the narrator's bedroom wall and over there toto was tied up securely very safely he was tied up with a rope and that rope was tied to a peg was fastened into the wall a peg was fastened into the wall was screwed up into the wall and the rope which was uh, was toto was having was tied up in that peg was hung up in that peg next paragraph a few hours later when grandfather and I came back to release Toto, we found that the walls, which had been covered with some ornamental paper chosen by grandfather, now stood out as a naked brick and plaster. The peg in the wall had been wrenched from its socket and my school blazer, which had been hanging there, was in shreds. I wondered that grandmother would say, but grandmother did not worry. Grandfather did not worry. He seemed pleased with Toto's performance. First write down the meaning. Ornamental means decorative. Naked means uncovered. Wrenched means broken. And socket means attachment. Meaning of shred is cut into thin slices. Okay, let's start with the explanation. After few hours... Though grandfather thought that uh, Toto would be very safe over there, he was safe. But as usual, since he was very mischievous, when grandfather and the narrator came back into that room, to the great, great shock, what did they find? That the walls, which was having ornamental paper, which was decorative papers, was now naked. It was torn off. The ornamental papers, the decorative papers were torn off by Toto and the brick, the background, that is the brick and the plaster could be seen. That means the wall was looking horribly dirty and nasty. And the peg which was hung up in the, which was uh, screwed up in the wall had come out from his socket. Rejme had been broken out from his socket. And the school blazer of the narrator was hung up on that peg also. It was hanging down. It was, throw, it was down. It was into cut into small thin slices. So what are the things that uh, Toto did in that uh, socket? In that um, uh, closet of the bedroom wall? Number one, he torn off all the ornamental papers. And made the wall look... Uh, naked without brick well by look by with brick and plaster only the peg has come out from the socket and the blazer of the narrator which was hung on that peg was in thin slices thin pieces they wondered what would grandmother say but surprisingly grandfather was not at all worried he was extremely happy to see toto's performance next he's clever said grandfather 
Given time, I'm sure he would have tied the torn pieces of your blazer into a rope and made his escape from the window. So as I told you, grandfather was extremely happy with Toto's performance. And as a, of course, out of fun, he said that uh, Toto seems to be very clever. And if he had got the time, if Toto had got the time, he would have turned Nayata's blazer into a rope and would have run out, escaped from the window. That this shows that the grandfather had a very, very good sense of humor. His presence in the house, still a secret. Toto was now transferred to a big cage in the servants' quarters where a number of grandfather's pets lived very sociably together. Sociably means in a friendly manner. A tortoise, a pair of rabbits, a tame squirrel and for a while my pet goat. But the monkey would not allow any of his companions to sleep at night. So grandfather, who had to leave Dehradun next day to collect his pension in Shaharanpur, decided to take him along. along. Now, you will get to know some more mysterious acts of Toto. Now, till th this date, Toto was still a secret from grandmother. So now, Toto had to be transferred to a big cage in the servants' quarter. Now, in the servant's quarter, inside that big cage, there were many other animals. As I told you, grandfather had his own personal zoo. So, inside that zoo, Toto was kept with other animals. Now, the other animals, they were sociable. They were very friendly to each other. And which animals were there? There was a tortoise, a pair of rabbits, a tame, that is a trained squirrel, and of course his pet goat but as you know toto was different so hatke hai sabse toto would not allow any of them to be his companions he would not allow these other pets to sleep at night he disturbed them continuously throughout the night so when grandfather saw that he decided to take him along to Shaharanpur. And why was he going to Shaharanpur? Because he had to go to Shaharanpur. He had to leave Dehradun. The very next day to collect his pension. And for that he had to go to Shaharanpur. But he decided that it is not safe enough to keep Toto at home in the private zoo along with other animals because he thought that by the time he will come back he must have done some more wrong deeds in that private zoo next answer unfortunately i could not accompany grandfather on that trip but he told me about it afterwards a big black canvas kit bag was provided for toto this with some straw at the bottom became his new abode. Abode means home. When the bag was closed, there was no escape. Toto could not get his hands through the opening and the canvas was too strong for him to bite his way through. His efforts to get out only had the effect of making the bag roll about on the floor or occasionally jump into the air. An exhibition that attracted a curious crowd of onlookers on the Dehradun railway platform. Now the narrator is saying that unfortunately he could not go along with grandfather on that trip to Shaharanpur. But he got to know later on about what Toto did during that trip from his grandfather. But to carry him all the way is quite a problem. So, a big black canvas kit bag was brought. Some straws were put at, uh, at the bottom. And this bag with the straw became the new abode, the new home of Toto. So, when the bag was closed, Toto, of course, could not escape from there, could not run away from there. Neither he could uh, get his hands through the opening. 
and moreover the canvas was very strong for him to bite so in short there was no chance of toto's escape from that bag so since he could not come out he could not get out from there he started jumping inside the bag and as a result the bag started rolling on the floor sometimes jumping in the air that means what toto's action inside the bag was attracting the onlookers the uh, who, the people who are on the road in the railway station they were surprised to see the bag rolling jumping into the air they didn't know that toto was there a monkey was kept inside so obviously they were surprised they were shocked the onlookers were shocked to see this exhibition to see this action which the bag was doing according to them it was a bag which was doing but what exactly was happening it was toto was jumping and rolling inside the bag and the same action the onlookers could see outside at the dehradun railway platform next paragraph toto remained in the bag as far as shaharanpur but while grandfather was producing his ticket at the railway turnstile turnstile means a mechanical gate which allows one person at a time to pass through it you must have uh, traveled by metro and you uh, when you enter the metro station before that you will see a revolving gate you have to uh, if you have a card then the card if you have a coin you have to put it inside that coin slot the card has to be scanned and the gate doesn't open till the time you passes through you uh, till you put all these things so over here there was a gate of that tar a turnstile is such a gate a mechanical gate which only allows one person at a time to pass through it toto suddenly poked his head out of the bag and gave the ticket collector a wide green green means a smile so when uh, when they were at the station but when grandfather was busy giving uh, showing his ticket to the ticket collector to ticket checker suddenly toto could not stay back he he suddenly poked his head out that means he somehow managed to uh, take out his head out of that bag and he looked at the ticket collector and gave a wide grin a very bright smile with his pearly white teeth so you can very well imagine what was the reaction of the ticket collector if I, if you see seem to uh, see a monkey smiling at you in such a manner how would you feel just imagine the condition of the ticket collector the poor man was taken aback who is the poor man the poor man over here the ticket collector and he's called poor over here not in the monetary sense but because he was in a great shock but with great presence of mind and much to grandfather's annoyance annoyance means when you get angry he said sir you have a dog with you you will have to pay for it accordingly so now see the sense of the ticket collector the ticket collector said that sir he told to the grandfather sir you have a dog with you so the ticket collector considered toto as a dog and he said traveling taking a dog in a train traveling with a dog cost charge so you have to pay for this dog of yours accordingly you have to pay for it in vain that grandfather take toto out of the bag in vain did he try to prove that a monkey did not qualify as a dog or even as a quadruped quadruped means an animal which has four feet toto was classified a dog by the ticket collector and 3 rupees was the sum handed over as a fare fare means the ticket the ticket price okay so grandfather tried his level best 
to convince the ticket collector that Toto was a monkey and not a dog. But all his efforts went in vain because the ticket collector did not listen to him every time he classified Toto as a dog. And accordingly, he charged grandfather with three rupees. So since grandfather could not convince him, he had to give three rupees as a sum and he handed over that three rupees as a fare, as a ticket price to the ticket collector. Then grandfather, just to get his own back, took from his sock, uh, sorry, pocket our pet tortoise and said, what must I pay for this since you charge for all animals? So the grandfather, out of fun, out of joke, took out a tortoise. So you can see over here, the grandfather was always car also carrying a tortoise along with him. So he took out the tortoise and showed it to the ticket collector and said, since you are charging for all animals, how much will you charge for this tortoise? Then grandfather, just to get his own back, own back means to take revenge, own back took from his pocket our pet tortoise and said, what must I pay for this since you charge for all animals? So uh, I'm repeating this paragraph again. So the uh, grandfather wanted to know how much charge will the ticket collector take for this animal? This animal means the tortoise. The ticket collector looked closely at the tortoise, prodded it with his forefinger, prodded means pushed it. With his forefinger, gave grandfather a pleased and a triumphant look, triumphant means victorious look, and said, no charge, it is not a dog. So, another of the, due to the request of the grandfather, the ticket collector looked very closely at the tortoise, pushed it with his forefinger and very happily in a triumphant smile he gave he, he told that sorry sir no charge for this animal because it is not a dog next paragraph when toto was finally accepted by grandfather sorry when toto was finally accepted by grandmother he was given a comfortable home in the stable where he had for a companion the family donkey Nana. Stable is a place where generally animals are kept, but also, uh, basically is a place for horses. On Toto's first night in the stable, grandfather paid him a visit to see if he was comfortable. To his surprise, he found Nana without apparent cause. Pulling at a halter and trying to keep her head as far as possible from a bundle of hay. Now, grandfather had a pet donkey also in that zoo. And the donkey's name was Nana. So one night, uh, before one night, what happened, grandmother came to know about it. And grandmother had no other option but to accept Toto in that private zoo. So one night, in that place where all the animals were staying, grandfather wanted to see whether everything was fine or not. And when he went over there, he saw Nana was getting disturbed and uh, it was trying to pull at the halter. Halter means a rope which is put around the head of a horse for tying it. So over here, Nana was tied up and he was trying to keep, uh, the Nana was trying to keep uh, itself away for a bundle of hay. So grandfather got extremely angry. Grandfather gave Nana a slap across her haunches. Haunches means back. And she jerked back. Jerk means when you pull yourself very suddenly dragging Toto with her. He had fastened on to her long ears with his sharp little teeth. So, Nana was given a tight slap by grandfather because at the beginning he saw, thought that Nana, it was Nana's fault. And he slapped Nana on the haunches uh, on his back. 
but when nana was just jerked back along with toto then grandfather realized what exactly happened what had happened uh, toto had cut off had bitten nana on his ears with his sharp teeth so whose fault is this it was of course toto's fault it was not the fault of nana nana was absolutely decent so he was trying to run away from toto which grandfather did not realize in the first, in the initial stage but when he was trying to drag away nana he saw that toto was also coming with him and when he saw uh, carefully he saw it was actually toto who had put a sharp little teeth on the long years of nana toto and nana never became friends it was but obvious how can they be how can they be friends so toto and nana they became they were no more friends a great treat for toto during cold winter evenings was a large bowl of warm water given him by grandmother for his bath he could cunningly sorry he could cunningly test the temperature with his hand then gradually step into the bath first one foot then the other as he had seen me doing until he was into the water up to his neck okay so you will get to know some more mysterious acts of toto one day it was a cold winter evening and grandmother kept a large bowl of warm water for of course toto's bath so what did toto do very cleverly very cunningly first he put one of his hand inside the water to test the temperature and then very slowly gradually he stepped into the bath first he put one foot and then the other foot and why did he do it did you see somebody doing it yes he saw the narrator taking a bath in this very way so he is trying to copy the narrator and then he was totally into the water up to his neck once comfortable he would take the soap in his hands or feet and rub himself all over when the water became cold he would get out and run as quickly as he could to the kitchen fire in order to dry himself if anyone laughed at him during this performance toto's feelings would be hurt and he would refuse to go on with his bath one day toto nearly succeeded succeeded in boiling himself alive so once he is up to his up uh, once he is inside the water up to his neck he felt comfortable and then he would take a soap and rub all over his body his hands his feet now while doing it obviously the water will become cold and then he would run out and run in and go to straight to the kitchen fire to dry himself this shows what that toto could not tolerate cold he wanted himself to keep he wanted to keep himself always warm so he ran inside the kitchen fire to dry himself and by chance if anybody laughed at him while he was taking a bath or while uh, during this performance toto's ego would have got hurt and he stopped with his bath he would not take bath any further so one day while he was inside he will get to know uh, another story in the next paragraph that one day what how did he burn himself totally alive a large kitchen uh, a large kitchen kettle had been left on the fire to boil for tea and toto finding himself with nothing better to do decided to remove the lid finding the water just warm enough for a bath he got in with his head sticking out from the open kettle this was just fine for a while until the water began to boil toto then raised himself a little but finding it cold outside sat down again 
He continued hopping up and down for some time until grandmother arrived and hauled him half boiled out of the kettle. So, again another funny story how he was almost burnt, boiled. So one day in the uh, kitchen, a large kettle was kept for tea. And of course inside the kettle water was put. Toto had nothing to do at that moment. So he decided to open the lid of the kettle. When he saw that the water was warm enough, he got inside. But his head was sticking out from that kettle. This was fine. This was good for a few while. But when the water started boiling, he wanted to come out. But while he, while he tried to come out, he found the temperature outside very cold. So he had no other option but to sit down inside the kettle and he kept on hopping up and down as the water was, uh, was keeping on boiling. And ultimately he would have burnt if grandmother would not have seen him at the, seen him at the right time. So grandmother came and hauled him out, hauled him and pulled him out from that kettle. He was almost half boiled. If there is a part of the brain especially devoted to mischief, that part was largely developed in Toto. He was always tearing things to pieces. Whenever one of my aunts came near him, he made every effort to get hold of a dress and tear a hole in it. So again, you will get to know another set of mischief which Toto did. Toto's brain was full of mischievous act. He knew nothing but only mischiefs. Whatever he found, whatever he got in his hands, he used to tear that into pieces. So one day, one of narrator's aunt came into the house. So he made the effort to catch hold of a dress and make a hole in it. One day at lunchtime, a large dish of pulao stood in the center of the dining table. We entered the room to find Toto stuffing himself with rice. Stuffing means when you keep on gobbling things very fast. My grandmother screamed and Toto threw a plate at her. One of my aunts rushed forward and received a glass of water in the face. When grandfather arrived, Toto picked up the dish of pulao and made his exit through a window. We found him in the branches of the jackfruit tree. The dish still in his arms. He remained there all afternoon, eating slowly through the rice determined on finishing every grain and then in order to spite spite means when you hurt somebody purposely grandmother who had screamed at him he threw the dish down from the tree and chattered chattered means the sound made by a monkey and chattered with delight when he broke into a hundred pieces so here is another mischievous act of toto one day Toto was having lunch. I'm sorry. One day it was a lunch time and the last dish of pulao was kept on the dining table. When uh, grand family members entered the room, to their surprise they found, found Toto stuffing himself with rice, gobbling up with the rice, was eating the pulao. Grandmother gave a scream. But this was not appreciated by Toto. So what did Toto do? He threw a plate at the grandmother. One aunt was there. Aunt also rushed towards Toto. But aunt did not receive the pulao. On the other hand, what did aunt receive? The aunt received a glass of water right on her face. And who had thrown that glass of water? Of course, it was Toto. Then grandfather arrived. Toto picked up the dish of pulao and exited that is he went out of the window and took shelter and took and went and sat on the branch of a jackfruit tree the dish was in his hand he remained there throughout the afternoon and he enjoyed every bite of the pulao every bite of the rice and he finished every grain of the pulao and then after that you will be surprised to hear just to hurt grandmother, just to disturb grandmother. 
what did he do and why he wanted to disturb grandmother because he, she shouted at him so and uh, so Toto threw the dish the empty dish remember it was the empty dish by that time he has completed the pulao he threw the dish from the tree giving a loud chattering noise with happiness with delight and threw it at the grandmother obviously it did not hit grandmother luckily it did not hit grandmother it broke it fell on the floor and it broke into hundred pieces obviously Toto was not the sort of pet we could keep for long even grandfather realized that we were not well to do and could not afford the frequent loss of dishes clothes curtains and wallpaper so grandfather found the Tonga driver and sold Toto back to him for only three rupees now by the end of this chapter by the end of the day grandfather understood that Toto was not safe enough to keep it at home he was not the sort of pet he was not the sort of decent and well-mannered pet to be kept for a long time in the house moreover grandfather was not rich enough to compensate for the losses done by Toto the frequent the regular losses and what losses the losses of dishes food clothes curtains wallpaper and other animals so grandfather wanted to get rid of Toto even at the cost of his own loss so he found the Tonga driver once over again and sold back Toto to him but this time only for three rupees he had her loss of two rupees because he had bought Toto from him at three rupees at five rupees and he had to pay him back sold him uh, sell him back for three rupees so how much money lost two rupees lost so he wanted to get rid of Toto even at the cost of his own loss with this I end the chapter stay safe stay home Thank you.